Hey everyone, John Lindquist here. This video is going to introduce you to the abstract factory pattern. So if we start looking at the document class here, we can see we have a Zerg factory and a player. So what the Zerg factory does is it sets up uh, how our game is going to start. So if we look into our Zerg factory, we can see that our Zerg factory is going to have a method for creating the base and creating the first starting units. So uh, Zerg always starts with a hatchery and they always start with a few drones. So if we pass that into our player and we look at how the player is set up in set race, you can see that we set the race factory as an I race factory interface. And then once we run setup on the player, it's going to create the base from our uh, Zerg factory then create the starting units from our Zerg factory uh, because the Zerg factory is passed in as a parameter of this set race. Now what this allows us to do, if you look at this player class, you can see that we don't have any references to Zerg or any other race whatsoever. Uh, and that's because we're using interfaces for the factory and anything that a factory produces in uh, design pattern talk um, they're called products. So you can see that this I structure would be considered a product and an I unit would be considered a product. So for example, one, one I structure, if you look into the Zerg factory, would be the hatchery. So if you look at the hatchery, you can see it implements I structure. And again, if you look at the drone, you can see it implements I unit. Uh, so another example, if you look at, let's ex, uh, expand this here. So player two, he's going to be Protoss. So we're, we'll create a Protoss factory. Uh, you could really just call this Protoss instead of Protoss factory, but uh, to keep it clear that it is actually a factory, uh, you usually put factory on the end. Uh, so a Protoss is passed into the set race on the player. And you can see it does the exact same thing as a Zerg factory would do, uh, but because that's abstracted through the iRace factory interface, uh, you don't have to specify anywhere within the player that it's Protoss. Uh, you'll always just have this create base and create starting units. Uh, I haven't done, I haven't built out a Terran factory yet to build out what a Terran base and what a, a Terran starting unit would be. Uh, but you can see how easily it would be to just uh, create another factory. So if we look at the Protoss one, you can see the create base is just returning a Nexus and creating the starting units is returning the probes. And, you know, if you just create the Terrans, uh, you create the command center and uh, the SCVs. So that's the abstract factory pattern in a nutshell. It's uh, creating these factories based on type, um, passing them in as a parameter uh, into something that's going to require this uh, a family of objects. So something like a base and starting units and other things all related from the same factory. And it allows you to swap out these factories, such as a Zerg factory, a Protoss factory, a Terran factory. So you can create this whole entire family of objects without having any dependencies on those particular products within the class that's going to receive them. So that's uh, our introduction to the abstract factory. I'll talk more about setting it up and how uh, the relationships actually work in future tutorials. I hope that helps. I'll see you next time.